uh, re-ask the question, please? Oakland Unified School District has been the most improved large urban school district in California over the last five years, yet continues to fail many other students. Only 42% of high school graduates and new OUSD have taken the AG courses required to apply for a CSU or UC for college, and this does not take into account the 20% of students who drop out and gain grades 9 through 12. We are not producing excellent outcomes for all students. What is your vision for equitable public education in Oakland, and what systemic changes will you work toward to achieve that vision? Well, first it shows how testing doesn't work because the test scores are obviously saying that we're doing uh, the most improved. A lot of reasons that is happening is because of some of the progressive schools that we do have, and then we're having students, and this is going back to a racial divide, so we have these students coming in from other places, uh, and they are um, not the residents of East and West Oakland. They're not people of color, but they're going to these schools, and they're improving how the school looks. But the racial divide is still getting larger and larger and larger. Uh, you mentioned it because we're failing, you know, almost half of our students now. A lot of that has to do with because we're not teaching them what they really need to know, especially if you are from the hood. It just being able to spout off dates and times and events that happened in the Revolutionary War is not going to help you when you are stepping over addicts and homeless and there's violence and drugs and crime. No, it doesn't help you at all. It really just seems so disingenuous. You know, and the kids know. They're not stupid. You know, even if when you see tons of propaganda in our areas for liquor or shorts and it's, you know, so much of their bringing, it's a hypocrisy of, yes, Women, we, you use your sexuality only to get what you want, but then at the same time you're going to school and you're like, oh no, don't do that, or, or you know, it's, it's horrible. So for me, the changes has to come with a world-centric view education, going out into the community, asking if they're down with that, and if not, what are they down with? bringing those voices on, you know, if we have healthy food in every school, it creates jobs, we hire right from the community here, uh, we hire our high school students that can come in and volunteer, and not volunteer, but hire them to work with younger kids, um, coaching, there's so many other things that we could do to instill values of, you know, oh, well, you don't, you don't have to sell drugs to make money. And I mean to make good money, not this poverty wage. Actually make a living wage if you create your own economic systems in your communities. So the biggest change that I would make is bringing that voice and telling teachers and going, look, I don't care how long you've been here, but you know what? The kids that you're teaching are not graduating. The kids that you're teaching are getting killed. You need to change the way that you are teaching because we need to stop the violence within because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in, from the elected officials now. Right? That's why we're trying to put together this. That's why we are putting together this whole slate. It is time. It is so time. So the biggest thing changes like radical, militant, social change is what I am bringing to this election. What role should charter public schools play for students and families in Oakland? Well, you know, I'm for free education everywhere, but unfortunately right now we are in a position that there are charter schools that are doing good work. Uh, I think that if they're not doing good work, we need to change it. Right off the bat, sorry, can't help you. Uh, so I think it's, a, it's, a, it's necessary now, but I would like to see us and would fight for getting us to a place where we do not need the charter schools because our public education system is so great. One, parents won't even put their kids in the charter schools. And two, it just will be, they'll be obsolete because we'll be doing the same sort of progressive, you know, out of the box teaching inside of our own public school system, too. How do you plan to support public schools and public school students in your district? Well, one way is going out there and meeting them face to face. Not through mailers, not through email lists, not through phone banking. And though, you know, we will do that. 
but really it's going to be about wearing out my shoes and walking door to door and not just to the parents, but talking to the kids and showing the kids that, you know, okay, you're six, you're nine, but I still want to know what you think and value you as a person. So this is your education, you know, and teach him. I used to have, when I was working, I used to have a joke with my kids like, oh, so one thing I thought was easy to do, they wanted to have hamburgers once a week, right? Okay, well, I'm not a big you know, fan of the, the way that we're cooking our food and the foods we're giving them now, too. But to teach them the civic responsibility would be awesome, right? And then they'd make a joke, it's like, oh, we don't want homework. I'm like, well, you could do that. You have the numbers, but you're going to have to organize and get everyone to agree. I'm like, right now, you all can't agree on where the ball hit the line in Foursquare. You know, it becomes such a huge issue of whether to stay in where you're, that's where we're teaching and basing your value. And I'm saying this to the kid. I'm saying this to the student, where we're basing our value system on how you do it. Foursquare? No, we got to think a little higher than that. And, and that's our responsibility as adults, as teachers. We need to instill that in you. So my biggest way is being able to going out and talking openly, honestly. And really, you know, like we said it over and over a lot of these answers tie in going to the community. What is it you want? What do you What do you think would be best for the community? And I will fight for you because that's why you voted for me. You're really not voting for me to go. Oh, here, take care of this for me, would you? <laughs> no. So that those are my biggest changes. Research suggests that much of a child's ability to develop social skills is developed in their infant years before they ever enter the classroom. What can you do to support early childhood education and intervention programs in OUSD? Well, again, these answers tie in together. Making sure that it's not the police going to the door telling someone how they can or cannot deal with the situations of poverty in their neighborhoods. It really has to come from the community. Luckily, I live in those communities, and I work in those communities, so I'm able to go and tell them, like, oh, no, I understand. Oh, believe me, because I'm shooing them, the addicts off my stoop every day, too. <laughs> and, um, and being able to, to implement that, I think, is super important. So talking open and honestly, implementing programs from the community, like with community members, and when I say open and honest, I mean that everything, even when the child is in the womb, the music you listen to, what you put in your body goes into that child's body, even the environment. What you hear is what the child hears. If you're in a situation where, you know, it's violent, you know that child is going to have issues. You know, if you're drinking six, seven Red Bulls a day while you're pregnant, you know, that kid will have some serious, you know, I don't know why Johnny won't sit still. Well, we know why Johnny won't sit still. Um, so, man, the answers are tied together. Being open and honest with the community and and be, telling them. And they know. It's just not a lot of people say it on a regular basis. So I, those, like again, my biggest difference is that I, I am not going to be afraid to tell someone exactly how it is. I'm just going to say it. Students with special needs make up approximately 10% of the student population in OUSD. How would you make sure these students are well supported by the district and served by high-quality teachers and instructional assistants? Well, I always thought that one way to do this is to make sure that when the, the teachers are in, because a big thing around is, oh, they're not credential. Well, why don't we support them to get credential and say, okay, well, we're going to help you get your credentials, but then you're going to owe us this many years. So that way the ones teachers that are of value, we keep them. And special ed is really, really important. Um, deaf services, um, wheelchair ramps. Well, see, that ties into it as well. Not just the, the teachers. We're going to have to have maintenance people to make sure that we can uh, help people who may you know, be in a wheelchair to make sure that all of that equipment is running correctly. That helps with their education. But securing teachers is a big deal. I think we should support them, make sure to get the credentials, make sure that they stay up on uh, current schools of thought, I think is super important as well, and, and providing them some, uh, support to do that, whether that be online or sending them to conferences, uh, and not using seniority necessarily as a way 
to just because you've been if you've been a crappy teacher for ten years. Okay, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go <laughs> because you've been a crappy teacher for ten years, and you're not serving um, those who probably have just like people of color have some of the least amount of voice as far as representation in our society. And then we're going to pause there and do another question.